Hey everybody, how's it going? Got the 922 XL Super on the bench. Uh, doing some prep work, studying. Um, let's go deep inside this saw. I'm going to start grinding it today probably, but I want to show you guys what I see as a builder. You guys ask me all the time, uh, Tin Man, how do you know where you're going with these saws? Uh, timing numbers, airflow tricks. So let's study this saw together. This is an old school saw, um, very, very old school technology. And uh, they did a lot of funky things in here that, you know, those of you that haven't been inside a uh, home light probably have never seen. Um, so let's go over this saw together and just kind of have a look, see and, and study the internals of it. Um, I see a few places already that I think I can make improvements. And again, friends, I've never ported a 922, so um, when I say I think, it's an educated guess. A lot of this stuff that we do, unless you've done, you know, five, ten of the same saw, a lot of it on my end is just educated guesswork. What do I think the saw needs to run better? Now, two things on this build. Because I've already done XL76s, those are very similar to this. There are some differences that I can go over with you guys. Um, very similar. This is just a bigger saw. Okay. The design of this though is like almost identical to the XL76. The 925s, um, that was more of an American saw. I've seen them up here. They're not as common. We only got 922s. So the 922 is 77 cc's. The 925 is 82. Um, different port shapes and transfers and stuff like that, I believe, between the two saws. So... Anyhow, let's go over this thing up close and personal. Um, I want to talk about some issues I see in the case, uh, the transfers, and show you guys a few things that I check before I do any machine work or porting. I think this is going to be a good build. Uh, this saw is pretty dirty, not abused or anything, but these things have a lot of nooks and crannies. I have several hours into this thing cleaning dirt and debris off. This one here is dirty enough inside the case that I think it's going to warrant me splitting this saw. So I'm going to have to take the clutch off, oil pump. Hopefully my case splitter will fit. This plate here, this plate here holds this bearing from what I can see. And uh, so I think the idea is, is I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to pull the rod off and then you know, pull the crank out. So, uh, quite a bit of work to do on this saw, but it'll be fun. I like these kind of builds. They are pretty time intensive, but they're a lot of fun when they're done. So without further ado, let's get in a little bit closer here and let's have a, a really in-depth look at this cylinder. It's kind of a neat cylinder. It's a different design and, uh, let's study it. Okay, friends. So First things first, um, cylinders are held on with nuts and bolts on these, or studs and nuts right here. You guys can see, here's your studs. This thing's really dirty in the crankcase, which as a porter, you guys can see it's, that stuff's caked on. I'm probably gonna have to tear this thing down. Uncaged needle bearings, just like a McCullough. That's kind of common for the era. Here's where your reeds go in. Uh, a couple of you guys are asking me about reeds. So your reed block slides in there and as the, as the crank goes down, okay, like this, as the crank goes down and up, it pulls vacuum or puts pressure, right? So the only difference between a reed saw and a piston ported saw is your reeds when your piston starts coming down, that pressurizes the case and pushes back, okay? So when the piston is on its way up, it sucks the reeds open. When the piston is on its way down, it closes the reeds. Now, reed saws are pretty neat. They have longer intake timing than a, a piston ported saw, meaning um, you can get more fuel and air through a reed saw. They're more complicated to port. Often you got to tune the reeds. Uh, that is art and science. But uh, I like reed saws because you can get a lot of fuel to them even at higher RPM. 
Now, the limitations though are reciprocating weight of the crank is usually heavy, piston weight. Um, that's the thing, friends. You can only go as far as you think the saw will allow you. Okay, so this is a pretty heavy duty crank assembly in this saw. Uh, heavy cast iron. And uh, so you got to kind of play the game. It's how many RPM do I think this saw will take? Okay, so just showing you guys, there's your reed block where it bolts in. It goes straight down into the case, okay? Straight down into the case, and that's how you get your fuel and air through this thing. Now, a couple of things I noted on this saw, and I'm going to show you guys. It's like I say, there's, there's no secrets here. We're all just learning and growing together, right? So that's what this channel is always going to be about. And uh, I, I enjoy showing you guys what I do. And I enjoy learning. I'm learning all the time, friends. All the time. If you look right here, and I'm going to zoom you guys in. Okay, your primary and your secondary transfer actually are pretty blocked by the case. Can you guys see that? See that little nub here? Okay, so from the looks of this, I'm going to back you guys back out here. From the looks of this, probably about an eighth of an inch of, of these transfers, okay, from the looks of it, probably the case goes to about there, okay. This is just a rough guesstimate. That's something I noted. I'm probably going to investigate. Now, if you look at how, and I'm just going to bring you guys up high here. So you guys can see this. Okay, I'll put the crank at bottom dead center. Here's your exhaust side. Okay, so picture how these, these transfers sit on the case. Okay, and this is a six transfer system in this saw. Pretty interesting. And from what I can see, from what I can see, the primary opens first, the secondary, and then this one's tipped up a little bit. Okay, this one's really shallow and uh, almost almost like a boost port. Now, you could put a boost port in this saw, and I was thinking of doing that, but the, a boost port would be a port right here, friends, okay? And it would go straight up like that. The problem is, is this piston is very unsupported in this saw, okay? And that is a common home light issue. There are ways to get around it, but I mean, realistically, friends, these these saws are, are designed kind of funky. So anyhow, getting back to this, because I find this interesting. Um, when I ported that first home light on the channel, go back in the channel. We did that saw on the channel together for, uh, for bucking. That little hot rod XL76. I had never seen anybody port one of those. And I was curious and I thought, this could be fun. Well, it turned into be a huge project and, and it was a lot of fun. But if you guys are going to port home lights, these are these are not for the faint of heart. They are hard to take apart. Uh, I spent, I spent uh, an hour today getting this circlip out, okay? Um, these things like to carbon up. This is on the exhaust side. Okay, and we're going to talk about that because that's what's interesting on these saws. This is on the exhaust side and it gets filled full of carbon. So you pretty much got to cook the carbon out of the exhaust side before those circlips will move. And there's no groove. Okay, there's no groove on this side to get the circlip out. There is on this side. Now, I think they did that because this would collect carbon. Okay. So, okay, so... If you look at the cylinder, the cylinder sits this way on the case, okay? Now it's upside down and backwards, but you guys get the idea. So, your primary is here, okay? And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marker the little nubs that I can see, so you guys can see them better. Your primary is here, your secondary is here, and the third transfer is there, Okay. So from what I can see, the third transfer doesn't get too much airflow. That is probably just there to sweeten the deal as all of the 
as all of the airflow and fuel collide, right, that just finishes off filling the combustion chamber, right? You got, so it looks like this one opens, then that one, then these, okay? Interesting design. Not a lot of saws with six transfers. Uh, the new Echoes have six transfers, I hear. I've never worked on one, but uh, the 7910, I believe it is. Anyways, so let's talk about these cases. I see a couple things I don't like about them. I'm going to zoom you guys in down in here. So picture, picture this rotating assembly is going around, okay? The air comes through the reeds, fills the bottom end, and then it gets spun around by the crankshaft. Now, this I like, see this in here, friends? This is a nice open channel, a groove, so that the air and fuel goes in between the crank lobes and ends up hitting your transfers, your primary, your secondary, and the third transfer there. But the one thing is, friends, it hits this and spins back around because this whole area here, you guys can see it, okay? That's where the transfers are. They're blocked. So um, kind of an interesting design. I'm going to draw you guys a little something on the bench here. Ductwork. Uh, when I design, I, I design and build ductwork. I've been, I've been doing that most of my life. A return air duct in a furnace. Starts off small, okay, like this. Starts off small, and now often we'll go like this, okay? We'll dovetail it into a bigger piece of duct. Okay, we'll say this is like four inches here. Now, think of the case like that, okay? That little ledge would be this, okay? This area here would be that little ledge in the case. This right here. Okay? Down here, where it hits this ledge in the case. And then it comes up, and when it hits the transfer, it goes over and up. Now, I know for a fact, if I build ductwork, the air is going in this direction, okay? If I increase the size of my ductwork, the air will go straight here, and it will actually get pulled around the corner like this that will create some velocity as the higher pressure duct which is the smaller duct goes into the lower pressure duct which is the bigger duct it will pull so the question is do we hog out these cases remember we were talking about uh case trenching in an earlier video that i dropped last week so the question is should i should i trench these cases now that would involve i will have to completely split this saw and trench the cases meaning i will match the transfer here by grinding this out and here to the case but the one thing here friends is i see there's these two little nubs in the way okay right here and right there so what i'm trying to decide is what am I going to do with those? Now, I could probably smooth and alleviate some of that and then trench this out and in to here. Okay? So, the idea is you want to visualize, or at least for me, I want to visualize what this case is doing, okay, at whatever RPM we're going to build this thing. Now, these things run like seven, 8,000 RPM uh, out of the box, maybe nine. Okay, they're pretty slow. They have pull though. One thing I don't lack on this saw is torque, which means I can increase the RPM quite a bit. Okay, but now friends, let's talk about RPM. Okay, if I increase the RPM on this saw, it's going to run hotter. So, there's no fins on one side of these home lights. Okay. This lays down, okay, like this. Now, the nice thing is there's fins on the bottom and the top, but on this side, there's no fins, so you are going to have a hot spot. 
Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, these saws do not run cool. They run quite hot. Uh, if you guys want to look, here's an XL76. This is the one that we blew up. Okay. This is the one that we blew up. This one has even less fins. Okay. Look at that, friends. Okay. That's why these are a little questionable to port. <laughs> okay. So, but if you look, that's the one we took the divider out. I don't think I'm going to do that on this. Okay. But look at that. They had such success with these that the 922 came after the 925, I believe. They just went bigger. Okay, now here's my porting on this one. This saw blew up, so don't recreate that porting. That was saw number two or number one. I can't remember. Okay, this is your stock piston. Now, these are not direct or not arrowed, okay, they, but they are directional. The exhaust side is the side without that little cutout. See the cutout for the ring or the circlip? Okay, make sure you put that on the intake side. Okay, and the exhaust side is just straight through. Now, I'm going to show you guys something what is interesting on these saws. Usually you get a little blow-by down the transfers in these saws. That's just something that they do. They pretty much all look like that. Okay, but... One thing you got to keep in mind with these saws is the piston is only riding on here, here, and here. Okay, so if you're going to port one of these, and here's your last transfer right here, right? If you're going to port one of these, this piston is not very supported. Okay, and because the piston is sideways, okay, like this... Okay, when you're running the saw, the clutch is here, and your exhaust port is sideways. This piston is going up and down. It's riding on this side and this side, okay, on the transfers. So, if I move this out of the way, in my opinion, and again, uh, everybody does things differently, you got to be careful what you do with these transfers because... They're only, they're only sit you know, there's only so much space for this piston to ride on. Okay, and if you start getting these too thin, you might wear the rings out. Because remember, the rings, the rings are also supported by the cylinder. So, and if you look, there's only a little spot there. The exhaust port is, you know, 80% of the bore on this saw. So... Just keep that in mind. Um, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna port one of these saws, and I know you can buy these cheap in a lot of places, but they're they're not the easiest saw to port. Um, I spend more time studying than I do grinding on these because they don't need a ton of work. But the work you do, you got to be careful. Now, this side of the wrist pin is actually covered. Okay, it's capped, so nothing can blow through there. Now, another thing I'm going to do here, just to give myself a quick eyeball, how much, how much overlap do we have on the piston skirt before we free port? Okay, I'll just let that sit for a second, and then I pull it out. So, not terrible. Uh, the 76s are basically almost free porting out of the box. There's no room there, so you can't do machine work to a 76. Um, you, you just really can't. The piston, look how short the piston is on a 76, friends. That's a stock piston. So, uh, interesting. Very hard to port because if you got loose squish, there's not really anything you can do. Unless, I mean, you could... Yeah, there's there's really nothing you can do, friends, because it's like even if you deck the case and move everything down, your stroke maintains the same amount. So uh, you kind of got to run what you brung with these saws. Okay, friends, so you got that line there, and then what I do is that's the bottom of my my micrometer right there. There we go. So 1.285, then I'll just zero it. 
And now I'll flip this around. This just gives me a rough measurement of how far I can go before I free port. Free porting is when the exhaust skirt. So we got almost a hundred thousandths there. So that's a good deal. So there's definitely more room to move on these. Not saying that that's what I'm going to do, but at least I know now, right? And I can write that down in my book and then I have notes on that. So that if I get another saw in and I think there's something different, I can compare. So that's just a little uh, bench talk. I'll probably just call this 922 bench talk. Uh, going over what I see, because I know some of you guys are going to want to port these. And uh, I like to share my thoughts with you. Are my thoughts correct all the time? No. <laughs> they really... I got a blown up cylinder right here because my thoughts were incorrect, but now I know. Um, friends, try things. If, if, you know, if you're not sure about something or you read something online and you're not sure, try it. Because the best knowledge I find is your own knowledge. Knowledge that you gain. Got something in my eye there, friends. Knowledge that you gain and earn for yourself is always going to be the best knowledge because then you know for a fact. And uh, I don't do hearsay or any of that. I only speak about things that I know on this channel. And uh, this is what I know now. I know that this saw is a little bit different than a 76, but very similar. Um, I know that it's not as tight, meaning I, can, I could do some machine work to this, and I may do that. Now, this has a domed piston and a lot of compression. Um, but the nice thing is, friends, if I want to make this thing a hot rod, I can... Measure my squish stock again with no base gasket. I'm still cleaning the case here. I, I'm going to put this down, measure my squish with no base gasket, and then decide what I want to do. Right? I could cut a small pop-up out of this thing, deck the cylinder and lower it, jack the compression way up. Then I can go in there and raise my exhaust roof the corresponding amount that I lowered the cylinder. I'll end up with stock compression and a saw that absolutely rips. So that might be the direction that I go in. These saws are a lot of fun, friends. I love building them. I love sharing it with you on the internet. These saws are definitely a labor of love. They take a lot of time to do. Um, just because they're so old, it takes a long time to tear them down, clean them. Um, I'm not even sure if I have crank seals for this, but if I, if I disturb the bottom end, I'm going to have to put crank seals in it. And, uh, you know, just kind of go from there. So they are a lot of fun. They are definitely time consuming, but when they're done, these things just absolutely shred. So I think this saw is going to be a winner. The whole idea here, friends, is I want to build a 76 like I did for Bucking, but I want to make it crazy. Uh, we have exactly 20 more cc's. The 76 is like 57, 58 cc's. This is 77. So um, I've always liked these saws. There are a lot of them around here. There, if a guy has a big saw and he's got an old saw, it's generally one of these around here. So if I can, if I can turn this thing up and make it fast, this thing will pull the snot out of a long bar at high speed. That's the idea. So, um, and this saw is a runner. Uh, I've seen this saw run on video and this thing was a runner stock. So if we can give it a couple thousand more RPM in the cut, we're going to do that. Anyhow, friends, uh, next time you see this, let's start grinding on it. Um, I'm going to attempt to split this uh, bottom end this week because it's so dirty I can't leave it, friends, because if something gets through there at high RPM, that'll grenade this saw. The uh, Where the reed block goes is super dirty. It's just filthy inside. It's just an old saw, and uh, that's what you run into with these saw. So. Um, you have to be prepared to be in for the long haul. I think I have crank seals for this saw, so uh, if I do, I'd like to pull the bottom end completely out and uh, and go from there. Then we can really get downtown with this thing, downtown Charlie Brown, and just grind the snot out of it. Anyhow, friends, uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, send me an email. Uh, I like talking about this stuff with you guys. I find this interesting. Six transfer ports on an old saw. Pretty neat. Biggest exhaust port of any stock saw I've ever seen is right here. Absolutely, incredibly huge. That's why there's a bridge in it, so that the ring don't get stuck like this one and blow up. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.